Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Sundays with Sully. If you guys were tuning in for the AIS explanation video that I said was going to be coming this week, well, guess what? Garmin snuck out some new software here at the end of January, and I want to get in front of this and show you guys that. So we're going to push that off a week or two, depending on what other stuff is coming out here. Um, so we're going to be talking about Garmin's new software version 26. Before I delve into this, as always, guys, make sure you're giving us a follow on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. All right, that's the shameless plug. Let's move along. What are we talking about? Like I said, Garmin version 26 software just came out. Before we delve into any and everything on this and what's all in this new software, let me go over what units this software is going to work on. It's going to be your 8400, your 8600, your 8700 series uh, MFDs. That's the current gen. That's also going to be your Volvo uh, glass helm setups. That's going to be in this software package. The 742, 942, 1242 plus series. The, uh, what do we got here? 723, 923, 1223, 743, 943, 1243, XSV and non-XSV series. And... The 1022 and 1222, that's the one with the uh, keys on the side there. That's what this is going to be covering. That's what this is going to work in. It's going to work on some of the other models, but you're not going to get all of these features. And that's not what I'm talking about. So, do you have one of those units? It's for this. If you got the one with the chart card door on the front, that's a 7600. They haven't supported that in about, I don't know, four or five software versions. So, you can come back for the AIS or see what you're missing and maybe go out and buy yourself a new chart plotter. So... Let's see, something to tell you guys. I uploaded this, I'm gonna show it to you guys. So if my editing is correct here, we are gonna have the chart showing up here. And if you'll notice at a quick glance, there's not too much different, but you'll quickly notice the bottom bar is totally different now. Gone is our home button. It has been replaced by a home icon. So, and you'll notice there's now a left and a right arrow there. So if I go to my right arrow, that allows me to slide over to the another pinned page. In this case, our Lumashore, and then we come over here, we've got our Merc, our Lumashore, and our chart, and we've got our uh, stereo controls there, we've got our Mercury over here, and you know, so we've got a whole bunch of different options you see as I scroll through this, or if I simply hit the home button, and you'll see that the pinned is highlighted in blue as we uh, go bigger here, you'll see these are all my pinned things here, nav chart, Lumashore, a combo that I've made, another combo, fishing chart, Yamaha, autopilot, all of those, are right there. And then you'll notice we go over here to charts right beside that, now highlighted in blue. You'll see our nav chart, our fishing chart, our 3D chart. Um, and as we continue to scroll over, you'll see all of our Sirius XM charts as well. Same thing again. If we go over to radar, you'll see there's our radar options, sonar. Same thing again. We can kind of scroll through here and see all our different available ones. Combos, those are any combos that we have previously made. Then we've got our smart mode, which everybody should be familiar with. Vessel. This is going to be all of our one helm things along with our verb camera, our active captain, the in reach. As we scroll over here, you'll see Yamaha, Mercury engines, fuel, wind, power, uh, autopilot. Uh, all of those things are all right there. And you'll notice on like the autopilot in the upper right hand corner there, there's a little pin in there. Now, if I go and I hold like the wind down, you'll see wind has been pinned. So now wind is now part of our pinned group. And if we want to get rid of any one of these, it's as simple as just holding down the pin. It asks us, do we want to unpin it? We say yes. So it's a little different look. If we hit the X here, that closes the screen out. So now we have, ideally, you set up what it are for your favorites, as it were, for your pinned screen. And now you can use this arrow to scroll between them. Or you can simply hit the home button on pinned and it'll give you those if you want to quickly go to one or the other. So that's a nice new feature there. One of the other things worth mentioning when you're trying to use this, you'll notice that when we're on our home page here on the charts, you'll see we have an options button right there in our lower right hand corner. If we go ahead and hit options, that's going to give us our normal menu that you would see here for different 
settings, how you want to set things up and things like that. But you'll notice over on the left side, that's now where our gear icon is or the settings. And that's where you can come in and affect our system changes and do things like sound and, uh, you know, turning on the alarms and things like that. So it's buried. It's a little different spot for you guys. And like I said, this is a very new, it's, it, it gives you a very new feel, but it's going to take you guys a minute to get used to it and get it set up. Trust me, after you spend about eh, 10, 15 minutes, it's going to become very natural as Garmin has done a very good job with that. So one of, let's talk about some of the features that they have added into this. So as we go into our nav chart, you'll see that our boat is centered. And if I go into options and I go into settings, we're going to see a new icon right there that says look ahead. You'll see that it's highlighted with the green there. If I press on it, it's now going to say change speed. So now what does all that mean? That means if the boat is going below 11 knots, the boat is in the middle of the chart. Once the boat goes above 11.5 uh, knots, the boat is now in the lower third of the chart, giving you a better look ahead view. I guess the theory there being when you're coming into a harbor, you kind of want a better picture of everything going on around you. Another nice new feature with this chart here is as I go over here and I click on this buoy now, instead it used to say review. Now it's going to tell us it's a port buoy and it's going to give us anything else that's in that area. So now it's going to tell us all of these different different things about the buoy. It's just a few less clicks to have to get into it, especially if you're navigating and trying to figure areas out. It's going to allow you to do that. One of the other nice features that they have done with this is they've had Yamaha integration, but it required a full page like this. We are now able to split this page up, which is a really nice feature to be able to do there. Another thing when we're talking about the engines, let's go over here, let's go into Mercury. Mercury, the integration is continuing. As you guys know from a previous episode, I showed you guys that you can now, with the Merc part, put this into the Garmin network and you have your engine display. Well, before it was just this. Well, now one of the new features we can do here is we can turn on what we affectionately up here call the redneck mode, and that's turning on and off the exhaust for the sport exhaust if your motor is so equipped. This will also now show non-alarm pop-ups for the Mercury, meaning like when you engage the joystick or the warning about prop spinning in the water, those type of things are now showing up on this display. They, uh, let's see, what else do we have on here? We've got, oh yeah, one helm overlays. They're going to be coming up and that's going to be, that's going to be a kind of cool thing going on there for when you do something like, if we look on this screen here, we see across the top where the stereo controls are, we're gonna have a tape like that going across the top, and that's going to be for the Empire bus. So that's gonna give us, we don't have to dedicate an entire screen to the Empire bus. We're gonna be able to put a couple of hot buttons right there for horn, bilge pump, nav lights, those kind of things right there on the screen. So you don't have to have a full or a partial screen dedicated to the Empire bus. Um, if you guys are a sailboater, Garmin's finally starting to listen to the sailboat crowd, guys. You can now upload polars for your boat into the uh, MFD. And once you have that, now if you're a sailboater, you know sailing to your polars and you're out there racing, you can now be able to also dampen your wind instruments to how responsive they are. So you can really dial this in. So if you're uh, you know, a Wednesday night beer can racer or you're a weekend warrior, you can now do that on here without having to get, you know, some big high-end software package. So that's another thing they've added into this. Um, looking at my notes here, guys. Sorry. I think I've covered everything. It's the chart look ahead, point of interest, polar table, Yamaha split screen, Mercury sport exhaust, Mercury non-alarms, one helm overlay, what units does this thing work on, all that other stuff. And what I haven't touched on yet is Navionics charts. We're waiting on our chart to come in, and once it does, I'm gonna do a Sunday's facility on Navionic charts in the Garmin. What all does that give you? What improvements does that get? So that's gonna be coming soon, so definitely make sure you stay tuned and uh, give us a follow, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff like I talked about to be in the know when that comes out. So that's it. 
That is this week's Sundays with Selly. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in uh, next week. It's either going to be AIS unless Garmin gets me a Navionics card, in which case it's going to be Navionics, or who knows, maybe something else cool will come out. But uh, you're going to be tuned in, you're going to be following, and you guys will be in the know. Till next time, guys. Peace. <laughs>